After landing at Ntebe International Airport, our Uganda hunting adventure was well underway. Conservation hunter Mike Dawson was on a quest to hunt and collect species that were endemic to this region of Africa. Uganda is truly a hunter's garden of Eden. We will be joining KOS Safaris and Aid Langley after booking through Dave Rodemeyer of Northern Operations Africa. Our professional hunter would be Zimbabwean-born Garrett Lecluse. Hamish Geed from Nolan's Hunting Safaris would be behind the video camera. After a night to rest in Ntebe, we were on the first charter plane, heading to the east side of Uganda to the Karamoja region. Our flight would take us over the magnificent Lake Victoria. Uganda is one of the most populated countries in Africa, with a population of close to 60 million people. Conservation hunting is imperative to the success of its wild areas. We were now headed for one of Uganda's most popular protected areas, the Pia Nupi Wildlife Reserve. This reserve extends some 2,000 square kilometers and is the second largest reserve in Uganda, only superseded by Murchison Falls National Park. Pia Nupi is situated in the Karamojo sub-region. The reserve is run by the Ugandan Wildlife Authority and the hunting quota is issued to KOS safaris to generate income for the running of the reserve. Pianupe derives its name from the word Pian, which means calm-hearted people, and Upe, which means enemy, which when combined means friendly enemies. The lodge at Pianupe is a basic tented camp looking over the vast plains that run away from Mount Kadam. Often in storms, roll off the slopes of this giant dead volcano and cross the endless plains. The lodge provides a comfortable base for the adventure to come. We were up early and after some good rain showers our adventure was afoot. Mike would start by looking for Jackson's hartebeest and any sign of Nile buffalo. We had many species to find in this magnificent landscape and had little time to waste. We would be assisted by a team of trackers and game scouts and young Tom, a professional hunting apprentice. Jackson's hotter beast is prolific in this area, and with the rains currently, they are often found covered in mud. They like to stand on the termite mounds and survey their surroundings for danger. Gotta get the first one right. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a cock up. <laughs> yeah, he punched yeah. it. Did you hear how long yeah. the echo came yeah. off the mountain? Yeah. <laughs> and then he went and did disco legs yeah. like 20 meters later. <laughs> the fan is empty. Thank you. The fan is on too happy with you. But <laughs> What's that? The Boba Chan's on too happy with you. Yeah. <laughs> they were saying to him, run, man! <laughs> Mike had his first Ugandan species down, a beautiful Jackson's bull. Not only Mike was happy with this one, the meat is phenomenal, and we'd all be enjoying this bull's sacrifice in the kitchen.
After travelling some way on very wet, muddy roads, we picked up some fresh buffalo dung and tracks. This was an area well frequented by buffalo bulls, so Gaz decided to follow and see what we could find at the end of these tracks. After spending some time with these buffalo, none were of the age we were looking for, so we decided to leave them be for another day. Mike was very particular in harvesting old animals past their prime and reproductive age. Great bulls, but for another day. Day two dawned and what we woke up to was best described as an amazing visual feast of wildlife and living action. So tonight you're eating white ants, eh? It didn't collect. <laughs> it must collect. It didn't collect. Sure. Oh, it was. Moments like this cannot be bought or unseen. They will live with the adventurer as long as he may walk the surf. True and unadulterated magnificence. The wild world truly showing off. I think it's the northern bandit. Today we would be looking for Nile buffalo, but we would see what the hunting gods blessed us with. With a morning of this magnificence, I could only imagine what was in store for the rest of the day.
fantastic shot. God, he did. Well done. The Boho Reed Buck is another of Uganda's great treasures and are found in good numbers at Pianupe. Mike made a good clean shot on this very good ram with the Sawa 300 wind mag. The Boho is closely related to the common Reed Buck and shows many of the same characteristics. Cracker! Oh, it came out of his chest. I don't know why he bothered practicing. Yeah, I mean, the, ra the range is for losers, man. Yeah, the range is for losers. The Sudan Arabi is a small antelope which is found in great numbers at Pianupia. The Arabi is a selective short grass grazer and enjoys the freshly burnt areas of the reserve. The Arabi is a member of the Tani Ten and Mike has yet to add an Arabi to his collection of species. In Uganda the Arabi is not threatened but due to sound habitat management and anti-poaching their numbers continue to grow and flourish. Alright, we've ma managed to just harvest this amazing Sudan Orabi. Um, he's not only very old, got a lot of secondary growth here on his horn. It's very thick and he's also still got great length. He's different to a southern Orabi uh, because he has these tufts on his knee, which is different to a southern Orabi. He seems to have white hair striping in his ears, which makes him a little bit different to a southern Orabi. And then on his behind here, he has a white patch and his tail doesn't have any black on it. It's orange like the rest of his body. So, yeah, an amazing Sudan Arabi. Well done, Mike. Happy days. Whilst we were preparing the Arabi for extraction, the trackers came up and said they could hear a buffalo in the distance. We decided to investigate, but the evening was closing in fast and we were losing light in the hurry. Sometimes just standing here like this, a bull that you want, yeah. stands up and maneuvers into position just by pure luck.
even you see the red cars, um, that's indicative of Nile. You, you see the red in the cars. You won't see that in the Cape Verde. The Western are also very red out there. And that's why I said North Karamoja was a scientific known meeting ground of Cape, Nile and Western uh -huh. Savannah. That's why we get the throwback red calves. That's mm -hmm. why we get some with drop quail. That's why we get like those cows that are just super flat. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, that's and that's, that's so, very pretty to me. I mean, a lot of bullshitting. Yes, there's all three genetic there. Mm. Faust to Faust to be honest. Yeah, beautiful. Eh? We can choose. We will not disturb them. It's a fucking good one. gonna hit him in the middle of the chest but right on the point of the shoulder. Wait, there's a motorbike. Okay, when you're ready. You must go. So we've just managed to take this very old, very heavy Eastern Defasa waterbuck. He differs to a common or ringed waterbuck. Um, obviously this orange color on their forehead and the black muzzle. Uh, they have a very prominent white throat patch and a lot of white coming up their ears as well as these white eyebrow patches. Um, they also have the very dark almost black legs, um, this reddish sheen along the flanks and towards the rump here and then on his rear instead of a white circle his whole thumb is a white patch. With this magnificent waterbuck loaded it would be headed for the kitchen. There's a popular myth that waterbuck meat is not good to eat. I beg to differ and all at camp enjoyed this magnificent animal steaks. After a huge thunder shower, we had decided to try to get out onto the concession and look for Elon. The roads were saturated and the land cruiser slipped and sloshed along the roads. The loud banging on the roof came full of excitement and the trackers pointed into the long grass. We looked frantically to see what it was and what they were looking at. Then we saw it, the shine of an old buffalo's boss caught our eye in the low evening light. Could this be the Nile we are looking for?
him again. Reload. Okay. Yeah, get on the sticks. He's coming to the right. Hit him again if you can. Hit. Okay, wait, there's two. Yeah, but... yes, the mic on the mic! Mic on the mic! Yes! <laughs> that is a Nile of a lifetime. I can't believe it. <laughs> you want it old, you want it broken, but what? when he dries out, he's gonna be grey, eh? Yeah, shit, this all this was grey, but yeah. came out looking for Eland um, and it's soaking wet out here, it's been raining for quite a few hours and we were cruising along and the guys told us they've seen something, stopped and it was just, it was all go from there, we, uh, we knew what we were, what we were uh, going for and um, Gareth just put up the perfect stalk for me. Um, how far was he from, from where we were? Oh, the shot? The shot, yeah. I'm going to say 50 yards. <coughs> More or less 50 yard shot. Uh, he was, basically the grass was right up to his eyes and I could just see the horns and, 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 and his, um, his hips. And um, it was a bit risky obviously, but uh, I, was, I felt confident. Uh, great rifle, perfect optics, and I knew that it was going to go down well. So, one shot, and it is the most perfect, most perfect Nile buffalo that I could have wished for. It's just really thank you, Gareth. Well done, fantastic. Really shot. great stalk, beautiful trophy. His teeth are gone, his hair is gone, his boss is worn down. He's just perfect. <laughs> Is that thing? Hmm? What is it? Velvet mite. Oh, is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> we headed north up here in Nupe and skirted around Mount Kadam onto the drier side of the mountain to look for the very rare Gunter's Dick Dick. The area was a bird's heaven. Our list of bird species was ticking over rapidly. 
The terrain had changed drastically to a much drier, semi-desert environment. The Kenyan border was not far from us. The dictic is a tiny species and extremely hard to see in the very thick undergrowth. got a tattered ear like your buffalo. He's a dugga boy, dick <laughs> dick. Dugga boy, dick Look at his crest. That is a monster, my friend. Well done, Mike. <laughs> Enjoy the feels, my friend. Well done. You might want to hold him while that crest's up. Because yeah. it goes down after a while. There we go. What have you done, Mike? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Jesus, oh, so I, I don't know what to say. Well done, well done. Well well done. Well done. Well done. It's meant to be, my friend. Like the nyati, like the dick dick. Good luck, this clip springer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is a cool dick dick. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this funny <laughs> little nose, Mike. Hell, secondary <laughs> growth. That's like two inches. That's two inches. From an inch and a quarter, we start getting excited. Okay, so this is a Gunther's tick tick. Uh, we spotted the female off the side of the road, and then we had a look, we had a look, and the male was hiding in some of the screen stuff. Uh, Gareth and Mike got out, put on a short stalk, got on him a few times, and Mike had a great shot through the gap. Uh, you can see he's got a little prehensile nose here. It's big crest, tattered ear, very good specimen.
one that's a canal left. Seventy-five. What? Did it just misfire again? Take your time. Wait, there's one behind. Okay, when you're ready, squeeze. Yes. Good shot, Mark. Yes. Good shot. Yes. Yes. Very correct. That's a big event. <laughs> it's high on the shoulder, yeah. I think it is a little low on the shoulder if I saw in the video. Really? Oh, yeah. That's a good. Down, man. There we are. There we are. He's doing disco legs. Did you read that? Yeah. It is every hunter's wish and ultimate goal to kill as swiftly as possible. On this occasion, Mike and team followed this Patterson's Elon bull for many hours, and the hunt was incredibly difficult with fickle winds and an eland with amazing sensor. Mike's first shot was a little low, and from then he endeavoured to put the animal down as quickly as possible. There's always that one animal in a safari that pushes you to the boundaries of what you as a hunter can summon. This was that animal for Mike, a beautiful old soldier of the Whistling Thorn Plains. Mike showed this bull every respect and sat with him quietly thanking him for the opportunity to hunt him. Well, we managed to take this beautiful old Patterson's Eland here in Karamoja, Uganda. Um, it was quite a long stalk, uh, we put in a lot of mileage after this big old boy. And in the end we got him down and Mike did a great job to finish him. And beautiful old bull, happy day. <laughs> <laughs> Today Mike insisted we change roles and it would be me in front of the camera. It feels very strange to be the client. Beautiful. Good shot, man. <laughs> Don't shake hands. Well done. Good on, Ubi. Yes, yes! Well done, buddy. Drop it, yeah. Fucking hell. Yes, please. And he's duck, huh? <laughs> nice RV, man. Old, eh? Yeah, yeah proper RV. Big, big, big bases, eh? Flat is there some second really. view, even? Yeah. Oh, there is too. Yeah. Oh, it's a very good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gangs, can, <laughs> <laughs> can you leave some big ones for the rest of us? Can you leave some big ones for the rest of us? Unexpected day today. <laughs> Got to shoot myself a uh, Sudan RV. Very big thank you to Mike. Yeah, opportunity of a lifetime, but yeah, we snuck up to about 160 with a 375 with solids and yeah, got a shot at this guy, he didn't go anywhere and yeah, magnificent specimen, great set of horns on him, you can see he's an older ram, see the hair's got that burnt look to it 
um, yeah, magnificent animal and just the sheer volume of Arabi you see out here is quite a treat. I mean, we must have been looking at 25 to 30 Arabi in one group here. So, yeah, from where we come from, we're very proud if you see two. To see this volume of Arabi is quite a treat. Um, once again, huge thank you to Mark. It's our last day here at Pia Nupi and we're heading off to Lake Albert tomorrow and see what more adventures await us. This cave has history going back to the first native people in the Pianupi area. One can see a timeline through the paintings and artifacts that dates back many thousand years. Like every hunt we need to find something that they just walking the meat here as they just sit around here. Celebrating. Yeah. And as they make their sketches. Oh, man. Yeah, it's a boat, yeah. Having a go at it. This I'm going to say is a road. Yeah. It's got very long horns. Yeah, and long legs. And yeah, they want yeah. to sable around. It's just an yeah. artist's impression. Those look like bones. Yes. This area has always had a very rich cattle herding heritage and both the Karabajong people and the Pakot people from Kenya have frequented this cave. Caves like this can only tell a story through their silence. As we were driving back to the camp, we noticed a very old boho root bug and decided that Hamish should take him. Gareth led the way to find this old man of the Pianupi Plains. Got him. Zoom back again. Yeah, man. Okay. We made it. Yeah. Hamish has hunted many, many common reed buck, so to hunt this boho of Uganda was a very special event in his career. I shall not soon forget this old warrior. His worn teeth, secondary horn growth and general body condition showed us it was his time to go. His contribution to his population long since completed. From Tohoro Airfield, we would be flying directly to Lake Albert. This flight took us over the Nile River and many papyrus wetlands. The Sitatunga shooting lanes one could clearly see cut into the papyrus. Lake Albert formed the western border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. On touching down, we were greeted by our new hosts, Bruce and Robin Martin and Aston Sparks. We quickly settled in and got down to sighting our new rifle. This one, a Ruger 300 Winchester Magnum.
Our first quest would be an endemic Ugandan cob for Mike. They were plentiful in the area and totally restored by conservation hunting. Hunters' dollars bringing population back to thriving levels. Remember to squeeze because that figure's tight there. Just gentle pressure. Ooh. Oh, nice shot. I think it spun them. Just reload and Yeah, it spun, reload. spun them. In the chest. Down you go. Beautiful, Down you go. Good shooting, sir. <laughs> That's a buzz baboon. Good shooting. Trust the love. Well That's a buzz baboon. The olive baboon is a large primate common throughout Uganda. It is known to be a successful predator in the Ugandan cob lambs are often taken by these large males. Thus, the concession encourages hunters to take off a number of baboons as they have little or no natural enemies in the reserve. With their large teeth and the big manes, they are a formidable creature. But there's one behind them, yeah. The front one, yeah. He's now yeah, closest to us. Yeah. Okay, come, let's walk, because now we're going to be feeling so little lamb on the right, man? Yeah. The one behind it, is that correct? No. I'm sure it's that one. The one let right me, in front of me. Let me keep looking. 
I'm sure that's him. I've been watching him well. It's a bit crazy, no? Yeah. So he picks up his head? Yeah, yeah that's, that's him. That's him, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's him. The animals behind him. Just wait, there's animals behind him. When you're ready, on the shoulder. Okay, wait, wait. Two fighting behind him. He's looking at us now, eh? Yeah. There's one right behind him. Yeah, there's one right behind him here, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. When you're ready, squeeze. Yeah. Hold on. God. There he goes. Hold on, mate. He's <laughs> going to see the sofa for sure. Yeah. <laughs> number one hundred and one. Number one hundred and one. <laughs> 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 So uh, uh, we are in the western part of Uganda now, uh, on the shores of Lake Albert, and uh, once again I have a huge privilege of being able to hunt a species which is unique to this area, which is the Uganda cob, and um, really a truly magnificent animal. Uh, the fact that it's common here doesn't make it any less special, and um, today is a very special day because I, um, if you can call it celebrate, um, I feel it's a massive honor and a huge privilege to have hunted my 100th animal species on our beautiful planet. And um, I started that when I was 18 uh, with a little um, impala near Hootsprate. And it's been a, an amazing journey. And a lot of people have been very kind to me along the way. And um, I've learned a lot and I've seen a lot in those, in those um, tours, uh, a lot of birds, a lot of beautiful scenery, uh, generated an amazing appreciation, I think, for our planet and what it has to offer us, and the sustainability of hunting, and how it really can keep communities going that no one really even knows about. And so I consider this a huge privilege, and um, I'm very grateful to the people who have helped me along the way, and with me today, Hamish, Gareth, all the team here at Lake Albert, and um, really a special, special experience, and I'm very, very grateful. Once again, Mike changed things up and made me climb behind the rifle. This time, Mike would guide me. I've hunted with Mike for over 20 years and we have enjoyed very many stories and very many great adventures. This was both an honour and time to enjoy it with a great friend. He's broadside, eh? Still behind him, I think. Just watch him. Watch him. He is. Stop. Yeah, second from back. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness. What an amazing animal, the endemic Ugandan cop. Big thank you to Mark for this opportunity and guiding me onto this magnificent ram. Memories that will live with me forever and a magnificent animal in this natural habitat.
but looking towards the guy. Do you have a shot? Just remember to squeeze very gently. Okay. Reload? Yeah. Fucking out on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah. Still break down. I'd like to say congratulations, Mike. <laughs> I'd also like you to say the foot down. Yeah, let's make candy. But then. You must be serious. You said, let's break dancing. If he was going to run, he would have run a long time I ago. I would have got him here in the chest. Then. Have well, you got to? Have you got to? What a shot! Have you got to? Have got to? Have got to? What a shot! Thank you. Uh, still wriggling. That is a fine show of marksmanship. <laughs> a fine show. Of what? Over there. Up there. And this is why, as you said, that's why it's a bush by Kank. Yeah. This, this is where he lives. Yeah. In the bush. In the bush. <laughs> In the bush. Oh, I mean, he was just sitting there. He's like, no one can fucking see me. He was like, just looking around, yeah. nibbling a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if they should know, swear you my videos, and it's not my video. <laughs> they are. They are small. Hey, I'm okay, Gareth. Thanks for helping me. <laughs> I can hear, my chest out. I can hear something in the bush. It might be a bush pig. <laughs> it's coming out now. Well done. Makoro Koto. Hey, very big. <laughs> Here we are, um, this is our second leg of my Uganda hunt at Lake Albert. This is our last day here. Uh, we had a huge storm last night, a lot of rain, a lot of water on the ground. And we had to find an owl bushbuck, a very important species for Mike. I think this is his fourth or fifth species of bushbuck. Um, and we had a great walk this morning, saw a few tracks, followed a few, but they led us on a wild goose chase. Then we flushed this old boy out of a thicket and he came running into the valley below us and was just hit in the thick sort of riverine brush. Um, and we managed to get on a peak, a ridge opposite him and Mike made an incredible shot. It was a very small target and I'm very happy to have this now bushbuck. A nice old broomed off ram and it couldn't have ended better. Well done, Mike. Come on him if he stops. Which one you? Yeah, which one you on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> That's low. Big up. 
Oh. <laughs> 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 He's saying bye bye. <laughs> I think Jumbo. Let's check the kind on his head, yeah. This being our last evening at Lake Albert, we had asked to have a bush bra and enjoy the beauty of the lake. Mike had also requested to have a goat on the bra, so we bribed the goat and enjoyed a fabulous evening, watching the sunset and the fishermen go about the evening fish. We thank Robin and Ashton for their amazing hospitality and attention to detail. We look forward to many more adventures. The lake is like a dark sea lit up by fireflies as the fishermen's lanterns come in. What a spectacle. Magical scenery you'll only see if you travel to these wild areas of Africa. Wild Frontier Safaris would be guiding us on a two-day fishing safari for Nile Perch. This was truly an adventure that will blow your mind. been looking forward to this somewhat. Okay. Have you ever succeeded in fly fishing for perch? Yeah, there is some people who tried. Did he catch? Small ones? Yeah, always yeah, small ones. Like this thing? No. Uh, something like yeah, Kilo? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's nice. perfect. Oh, very that's nice. Perfect. Very nice. Perfect. To get in there? You get it. That means we go. The Nile rises out of Lake Victoria and is a massive river. This stretch of it lies in the Murchison Falls National Park and is protected by both the Ugandan Wildlife Authority and the Ugandan military. <laughs> drop it, drop it. There's a crocodile behind it. You'd be using both conventional tackle and fly gear. We had no idea what we were in for. This was truly an adventure. Terrapin! Murchison Falls is one of the most powerful waterfalls in the world and emits large volumes of water. 
300 cubic meters per second is a rough guesstimate. The reserve covers 3,800 square kilometers. Nothing prepares you for the scenic splendor that is Murchison Falls. The river is pristine and wildlife abounds. Mammals, birds, reptiles and insects are a scenery overload in this wild place. Uh, let us let us first see. Maybe we can manage from here. Maybe gone. It's gonna. Yeah. Right it from that side. But it's there. It's here. Okay. Just keep that tension on him, and we'll get there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a Can good place. Let's go to the beach. Things are so pretty. Haven't you? Yeah. Is it coming? It is. Yeah. <laughs> make it a plane? Make the make the what? Make sure you bring it now. Okay. When you're ready the sand behind you, bro. Yeah, but let's try the other. Look at that thing! <laughs> yes, please! That's the biggest beach. There it is! Thank you, Mr. Fish. Let's measure him. He's been attacked by a croc or something, eh? Fifty-four. Mind stand? Splashing's not the best. No, him splashing will track them if anything. The tails have now approached have come true and we have successfully landed and released a 40 kg fish. One could see how these fish seem to be ancient and prehistoric. Monster fish in an untouched, spectacular environment. This was truly stuff that dreams were made of. What a day on the Nile. We have caught eight different species of fish and enjoyed some of the most amazing natural wonders. However, our daylight had run out and we were grateful for the adventures we had enjoyed.
Yeah, yeah, we might have to beat the big Buenya. I see the cool box on the boat. There's a table look out. I don't know how to do this. Just sort my cut there. Uh, give me that road if you need. Yeah. Yeah. It's out. out, yeah. Here we go. No, I don't want to fuck that up. It's just reliable. Okay, good to go. Drop, yeah. drop. Why is it not jumpy? Are you winning? Nothing, no. If this is a catfish, it's a lunka. Oh, you caught lines, but... Ah, uh, catfish. So what we got there, Mark? A black? Black Nile catfish. Hey, cool. Long whiskers and a long tail long streamer. Long tail streamer. That, that, that thing makes it different. The man has done got you. Alright, cool. I release him. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's the rat sauce to eat. This is it. Hey, I'm out of here. Whoa, Big catcher. Arguing with me. It's yeah? arguing with me. It's a what is that? It's a perch, man. Yeah, yeah it's a big, oh. big catch. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a monster. That's oh. a freaking oh. monster. What kind is it? Then catfish. Yes, catfish. Yes, that's a bass catfish. That's a bass catfish. Yes, is now we took it. That's a duck ass catfish. A yeah. deep one. Bye bye, darling. Bye bye, darling. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. 
Thank you. Yes, please. Uh -huh. Yo, it's a big it's, it's a cut fish. Hey, look at that. That's not an owl though. Catfish, no. A what catfish? Sudan, Sudan, Sudan catfish. <laughs> Jesus, you are, you are after species. You're getting species. And you talk. Okay, what we got there? This is a Sudan catfish. Doesn't have the streamers and that, that the Nile's got, so different species. Long with Very it. Very cool. Apparently good eating, but not this one. Not this one. These can go back. Okay, Let's see if he'll go. He will go. Other the way, bud. Boy. I need a boat. Jump on the boat. When you run out of land, if you get in the coast. You're taking him on the boat. You're taking him on the boat. Yeah. 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 Uganda, you have been so good to us. We have seen things, hunted things, and caught things that we can only have dreamed about. This is the story so far. We have hunted 10 different species. We have caught 8 different fish species. We have seen 244 bird species, of which 102 are new species to the life list. This has just been an adventure that is without equal. I thank you, Mike and I congratulate you on reaching a milestone of 100 species. All I can say is too many more adventures. To all the people who have made this possible and contributed to this epic adventure, we thank you and we look forward to so many more adventures with you. So with all said and done, and with only memories to resort to, we return home and dream of all that is Uganda.